Yes, guys, I'm sorry. Welcome to Cardiff City World. It is a day. Uh, we're going to talk today's game. Just a bit of a quick match reaction because the schedule's all a bit messed up because the international break and Good Friday games and stuff. So the flower hour will be on as normal tomorrow. Like them, they'll be give a bit more of an in-depth match reaction and, and that type of stuff. Um, but I thought I'd do like a quick reaction to today's game, if that's what you call it. Absolute shower of shite. Uh, gotta be honest, and then um, I've been massively, I've been massively sort of pro the uh, Errol Bullet. I think for large parts of the seasons, I've really felt like even when things were going wrong, I felt like he was the right guy to take Cardiff forward. Um, but at the moment, there's some some things aren't washing with me. Some of the things that he's saying regarding his contract and that sort of thing. That's not washing with me. Um, it's tactics. I don't mind the possession-based football um, because I think it can be efficient. It can be efficient. It can be effective if it's with purpose. As I've said before, at the start of the season, I felt like we had possession football, but it was with purpose. We were creating chances. We were doing things. Whereas now it feels very lateral, very sideways, very backwards. There's no real urgency with it. There's no dyna dynamism to it. Um, and also his, his team selection, he doesn't seem to be learning. Um, I mean, I think if you spoke to 99% of Cardiff City fans and they asked them if Ryan Wintle and Joe Rawls work as a pair in midfield, most of them would say, no, they don't. Because we've seen it time and time again, it doesn't work. They don't work as a pair. Maybe you might get the odd game or the odd opponent where it, it kind of works. But generally speaking, it, it doesn't work. And you've got... Uh, a sign in like Mark Turnbull, who's come in, who is like ready made and perfect to play alongside Cyopis, who, in my opinion, and, and a lot of people's opinions, is one of the best defensive midfielders in the championship. Uh, both of them are sat on the bench and he refuses to play Turnbull in that double pivot. And then you're chasing your 2 0 down. So do you take off Rawls or Wintle to kind of try and get, get a foot in the midfield and win the ball back, maybe? A bit better, be a bit more aggressive in the midfield, but Cyopis on, or or do you put Turnbull on, who's got a bit that bit of aggression, but also technically very good to progress the ball through? No, you take off your uh, one shining light this season in Ruben Corwell. Now, I'm not saying Ruben Corwell is the be all and end all. I'm not saying Ruben Corwell was particularly great today, but do you know what he will do? is he will try and try and try in a Cardiff City shirt. He will try and be effective on the ball. He will try and make things happen. He will work hard, everything which Bowler doesn't. Bowler doesn't care. He's not going to be here next year. Um, she doesn't care. Why is he playing? Wilson Esband, with the greatest respect, he was being very, very good recently. Against the Jacks, he was abysmal. So bad he got hooked at half-time. Why is he starting today when you've got Jamalu Collins, who hasn't played for a while, who has been relatively steady all season? He played O'Dowder at left-back later in the game today. Could have done that. But to play Wilson S. Brand again, I just felt like that was a bit... All right, let's put it out. If, if he played Wilson, I said in my preview, if he plays Wilson S. Brand again, I don't have a massive issue with it as long as it's used as a tool to start well, take us forward, be aggressive, and get at Sunderland. Sunderland, right, was so devoid of confidence. They've taken one point from the last 21, and we make them look like Brazil because we let them play. We just stand off them, and we just let them knock it about like they're flipping prime Rivaldo and just, yeah, let's see your Perlo, mate. Let's just knock it about. You, they've got a makeshift centre forward in, in um, Joe Bellingham, who, don't get me wrong, excellent player, and he was my one to watch, and he, he did the, a lot of the damage today. But, I mean, centre-forward is not his best position. And, again, if, you know, if it wasn't for Phillips today, I think it could have been embarrassing. We made them look like fucking, like they were good. So frustrating, because we could have got at them early, put them under pressure, got an early goal, and then... They, there's every chance they crumble because they are devoid of com uh, confidence. Sorry, I said Mark Turnbull. I meant David Turnbull. Um, it's just so incredibly frustrating. I feel like he's not learning from his previous, I wouldn't say mistakes, but he's not learning when things haven't worked. I'm, I'm just... 
for all the positive things that happened in the first half of the season, and I was so um, so encouraged by the things that were happening on the pitch at the start of the season. He looked tactically astute. He was changing it up for different opponents. Um, he was utilising the possession of football in an aggressive way. We were pressing teams. And now we just look like, oh, we're safe from relegation. We're not ready for the playoffs. So we're just going to do... We, we just let Sunderland... And this is one of the things I brought up in the preview, was don't let them settle. We're the home team. Get a crowd behind you by starting fast and aggressive. We were good for five minutes today. Um, and like people might criticise me for this. Callum Robinson's on the bench. There's rumours that he's selling his house and getting ready to move. He's on massive wages. He's in a bad attitude at various points this summer. He's definitely fallen out with the manager and other people at least once because he was reported on. There's been rumours that it's happened a few times. Why is he on the bench and Kean Ashford or Joel Colwell are not? Now, I, I'm not saying chuck the young players in from the start, but let's ask, like, like we're not going to get relegated. So let's start looking at next season. Let's start looking at Syopis and Turnbull as a pair. Let's start looking. Let's give Oli Tanner a run on the right instead of playing a lone player who does not give a shit, doesn't want to work hard, and is as inconsistent as inconsistent comes. It is incredibly frustrating. Incredibly frustrating. What's the we're not like what do we benefit from playing Josh Bowler on the right instead of Oli Tanner? Oli Tanner will work hard, he's direct, and he's probably gonna be here next year. Does my nothing. Does my nothing. Really, really disappointed. And 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 the players and the manager and the club, they owed the fans one today, and they turned up even worse than they did against Swansea, in my opinion. Because the Swansea game, you can kind of all right, they were very, very bad, but Swansea were also very good, not necessarily in, in the quality of their football, but in their energy and their aggression and their work rate. Right? They wanted it more than us. Whereas, like I said, Sunderland have taken one point. And it's just, it's just frustrating. So, like, I accept that there might be certain reasons why, say, Syopis is rested because he's travelled. But Cyprus didn't play. So, all right, he's travelled. Fine. Bring him on a half-time then. Because God knows we needed him in the midfield to flip in, get stuck in and try and get the crowd going, get the team going. You know, we got some... Our bench looks strong. I will say that. Our bench looks strong. But it still wasn't strong enough to do anything in the second half. We didn't create anything. Now, is that because Aaron Ramsey's not fully fit yet? Is that because... Ruben Corwell's our most creative player. I I I, I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm interested in what you guys think. Like, I just reading that first comment there. Reese says the players need to take some responsibility. Some five year yard passes went to opposition players. Some players can't couldn't all take bag up. Yeah, no. And look, the players do have to absolutely take responsibility for effort, work rate, etc. But the tactics, the press how direct the passing is, the speed of the pass, the things like that. That's set out by the manager and the coaching team. Um, and I, like uh, someone, uh, one of my friends commented on one of my Facebook posts earlier when I said about the show and said, never seen such a low quality of passing at this level of football as it was today. But that's incredible because Car Cardiff have got some good passes to football. You know, like Phillips is an excellent passer. Rawls is good on the ball. There's there's players in there. Ramsey, you know, there's, these people are good good footballers. Um, I just, I'll never, I will never understand the the Rawls Wintle pairing. Like it doesn't work. We know this. I don't think there's any excuse. I think, you, I you can't tell me that like, Syopis didn't have a half in him because he he barely played in the international break all right he traveled but teams travel up on a plane regularly like up to the other end of the country or whatever it's not the end of the world andrew says we've got players back from injury now and he starts with wintle and rolls yeah i don't know what it is mate with wintle he doesn't seem to like to drop him 
And I think Wintle is a good squad player. He's got things, something to offer, but I just don't think he's got the quality, particularly the way, what doesn't make sense to me is the way the manager wants to play, right, is possession-based, is very passing-heavy tactics. Like, Ryan Wintle isn't that guy. He offers a lot of other things, but he's not the guy who's going to break the lines with, like, a killer pass or spread the play from one side to the other. Or, like, he carry the ball, and uh, it's, it's very, very strange. Um, yeah, it's just... And, like, this Josh Bowler just constantly being inside instead of wide does my head in. Like, and this is why, initially, when I saw Grant through the middle and a doubter on the left, and Colwell in behind. I was quite happy with that. Like I said, that that is what I, I think that was the, the three of the front four that I would have played. I would have played Tanner on the right or someone else on the right over Bowler. I wouldn't have Bowler in my lineup whatsoever. But you need midfielders in there to, to progress it. Joe Rose is normally that, but I don't think he's able to focus as much on that when Wintle's alongside him. The lack of movement has been there all season off the ball. Um, and you do wonder if the likes, like I've mentioned a few times over the last few months, Colwell will make these good runs into little pockets of space and he wants the ball and the ball doesn't come because either the player who's got the ball is not capable of playing that pass or it takes too long and they go backwards. And at some, some point, I guess some of those players maybe stop making the runs and movement. I don't know. But then equally, there's wingers and there's forwards who just stand still. Josh Bowler does his hair. J. Jude was poor. But it like I don't know what it is about our number nines in Atete and now Jeju. Big, big, strong units, like big guys, athletic, fast, physically big, tall, and they just fall over like they're four foot nothing. Do you know what? It was shambolic today, and it was embarrassing that this was a game which I felt that Cardiff needed to turn up for the fans and just, yeah, very, very poor. Um, and I, I, I'm almost like lost for words, which is not ideal when you're doing a, a show, but it's, um, it's just, I found it incredibly frustrating to watch. Um, do you blame it or do you put it all on the manager? I I've been sticking up for him all season, even when we've been poor. Um, I even put a lot of the, the Derby issues on the players, but then also the manager's got to motivate them. The manager could have sent him out today to start fast and aggressive and press high and move the ball quickly and move off the ball and do all the things that we sort of talked about in the preview to put Sunderland under pressure, early doors, will build on the fact that they had no confidence, get that early goal, get the crowd up in the first few minutes, like really, really come out the blocks quick. And all right, we did five minutes, we looked okay. They get a penalty after 12 minutes. And the mentality, like, the one thing I will say, the mentality of that play, that, that 11, like, just to, they completely crumbled when we went 1-0 down after 12 minutes. Didn't go 1-0 down after the 89th minute, and there's no, no time left, and, oh, we've been done there. 12 minutes into the game, and they crumbled. And Sunderland then, like I said, looked like prime Brazil. Very, very frustrating. Um, so this is an interesting point from Reese. He says, um, board signings, not manager signings, I reckon. You could tell Balu wasn't happy with Jeju originally when he said, if, if you have £10 and you can't spend 13 so we have to work with what we've got. I do accept maybe he didn't get the players that he wanted. But also, yeah, I think in Jeju's case, it was a case of getting someone and they've gone and got him someone who has scored goals, uh, at least a few goals in the championship. They could have got him no one. They they effectively tried. And not by any means to get up for the board because they couldn't get fucked as well. Um, I'm angry, which... Frustrated. 
this was a big opportunity for these players to show the fans they cared. And I think I could pick like a handful who look like they give a shit. But that's a worry. Because normally that's a sign that the manager's lost the dressing room. Now, I don't think that's the case, at least for the majority. But, I, yeah, we just looked like we didn't care. We just looked like we just looked. There's no urgency, no movement off the ball, no aggression. Like, put a tackle in, I'll do something. Gutas looked sloppy today, giving the ball away, sloppy in his tackling. Maybe his confidence got knocked by the penalty because it's his mistake, and then he makes the foul. Thing. Not even massively convinced it was a penalty. The only one really who can't be criticised is probably the keeper. Um, Reese says he thinks he's been given a poor. Uh, think he's been given a poor squad, and he's done well with what he can do. I do think the contract situation is uh, really taking the mech now. Allow him to prepare for next year is pointless. So. I agreed with that two weeks ago, three weeks ago, four weeks ago. However, it's not a one-sided conversation. How can I word this? Um, there was conversations between both sides uh, around the Christmas period, January, whatever, just before. Um, and one side wasn't quite ready to commit. And now the conversations have gone away. But also, so I, there's two sides to it. Like for one side for me, I think, no, stick with him. He's shown enough in the start, first half of the season, that if we can give him the tools to do the job and you can give him time, there was enough positives there for him to build on and go and do so and like build a side and rebuild. But then there's another side of me, which is like, well, hang on a minute. All right, it's not the best squad in the championship, but it's not awful. Like, there's some decent players in there, good footballers. And the one thing which concerns me is I'm, he's not learning as he's going along. He's making the same mistakes as we're going along, in my opinion. Um, and I think the Swansea game was a alarm bells for me but because the alarm bells for that for me was like he's got to send that side out and if you look at the way we went out in the first derby game um against Swansea earlier in the season we started fast we were aggressive etc etc and then everything which we were today today and we were against Swansea lethargic slow everything is like very negative and passive the manager can change that if 10 minutes in the side is passive and, and not working hard enough or not moving the ball quick enough he can get a message onto those players and say move the ball fucking quicker be more aggressive work harder press higher up the pitch which tells me that against swansea and against sunderland it was a tactical decision to not aggressively press and keep possession of the football and be methodical. You can be methodical, but still be have purpose. Sick and tired of it. Um, Reece says, to be fair, uh, Dalma was in all the papers saying we're spending in January. They didn't back him. So I don't blame Bullock for that. Don't trust the club to get the next appointment right. Yeah, I don't trust them to get the appointment right. But you can't. The problem is, right, they may they will have had maybe say you've got player A, right? And you've set aside two million to spend from just an example, right? If then when you go to the club that's selling that player, they say, Well, we want two and a half. And you're like, Well, yeah, I can't go for two and a half, or they say three. Like you can't force clubs to sell at the price you want to sell. And then I think in some cases they got priced out of certain things. Um, one of the big criticisms that I've had of the manager. And Andrew's just mentioned it there, is he hasn't got a plan B. So when his initial tactics aren't working, he doesn't do anything different. He doesn't mix it up. He doesn't play two up front. He doesn't go three at the back. He doesn't he doesn't change anything. It's only recently we've seen Grant up, up front through the middle. And it's almost like too little, too late. 
And like when he has done it, he hasn't had the right players behind him to get the ball in behind to Grant. What's the point in having Grant up front if Wintle's the ball trying to get him to get the, get the ball to him? You need it to be a Turnbull, a Ramsey, a, a Colwell, um, a, maybe a Rawls. Like, it's frustrating. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Iridian says it's time for bu uh, Bullet to bite. Um, bite it. His tactics in the last two games have been shocking. I don't like the managers getting sacked, but he's, uh, oh my God, he's lost the total motivation from the players. It's difficult to disagree. Certainly, with the motivation part, I'd not. And I've been very much that he's the right man for the job all season, even when we were poor. But there's been times when I've, as I've said, there's been times when I found it difficult to defend him because of the, some of the decisions he's made. But I've also think he hasn't helped himself. And this is the problem. And I don't want to turn completely. And it's not my style. Like, I try and be as fair as I can. And I don't normally do these shows on the match day because I I find that emotion runs. And if you take a bit of time to speak to it. So, like, we're going to do five things we learned from today's game on Sunday. Um, and we'll look at it. And the boys that from the Flower Hour will do a full match reaction uh, tomorrow night. So, please do check that out. Cardiff City World. Cardiff City content seven days a week. If you'd like to get involved and, and get involved in some of the content and shows, then um, get in touch and we'll we'll have a chat and see what we, what we got. Um, the players were out the day before at uh, Chatham Races drinking. I think yeah, the players were out on a piss the week before um, the Swansea game, which is fine if you turn up. It's just a bad luck if you don't turn up, and they didn't turn up, and this is a problem. Ridian says. Um, Today's performance was abysmal. We needed a gutsy display, especially after the mall in front of Jacks, and we haven't got a bad squad, but there's something not working, and that's down to the manager. Mm. Um, I do think, unfortunately, and I'm not going to single out players, anyone who's watched my content over the last couple of months knows who and what I'm referring to. There is, I think, you've got some good young players, You've got a couple of really good experienced players, one or two decent loans, but there's also a couple of bad eggs in there, which have got a really bad attitude. And if anyone who watches the Roger Giggs um, show with me and Roger, we've talked about it many a time. One bad egg is all it takes to cause bad performances, bad morale, everything within the squad is an issue and in my opinion there's at least two maybe three or four um who've got bad attitude and that rubs off on people because they will have friends within the squad and it's an issue um reese says i'll back him some bad performances but the start of the season we all said mid table we've got mid table it's because of him that we've got close to the playoffs and now the fans are upset that we didn't i'm not upset that we didn't get playoffs mate that's not why i'm frustrated I'm frustrated. My most the the thing which frustrates me the most out of all of it is he hasn't learned as he's going along. He hasn't changed certain things, whether it's his selections, taking off the same players, um, not having a plan B. Like these are all things which are uh, are well within his remit and well within his ability as a manager to do. So for him to not do it, that's a problem for me because as it says in the, is in the title of the, this episode, will stubbornness be the fall downfall of Baloo? But uh, like I and I, unfortunately, I think particularly his relationship with the fans, I think his stubbornness is what kind of fractures that relationship. It's already started to do so. There's um, certainly a chunk of Cardiff fans who've had enough, whether it's the tactics, whether it's the constant taking. Um, taking the Colwell off or whatever it may be. Oh, Callum, haven't you got anything better to do on a Friday night? Come on, baby. Um, GD Party says, we need a leader on the pitch. Been saying it all season. Rolls may be club captain, but he's in and 
he's in and out too con- too much for consistency. Yeah, I think Rose club captain is fine, but we need it's not even about captains necessarily. I think it's you need leaders like your your Sean Morrison's and your and that it's, it is what it is. Ah, oh, dear, some people. Da, 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 da. Big result for the, for the Jacks today. Draw in with relegation fodder. Excellent. Really turn up for two games a season. Well, one game a season this year. There we go. Um. Yeah, and like you look, you are right there. Reese says, uh, look back in the Warnock. They had a, a, a squad of leaders. Um, and I think like Rawls is a is a good club captain, but he's he's never going to play every week. He's not going to, you know, he's. He's just not, and I think it's good. He should be in the squad. He should be around the club, but he's not good. Like realistically, even if you look at the squad as it is now, as I've said, um, like Turnbull and Sarpa should be that too. And I still don't understand what he's doing with that. I don't understand. Um, and I get it. Maybe maybe um, Turnbull wasn't his signing, but once you've got a player of that that quality, like use him properly. And they have he hasn't he's not learning it and this is that's the problem but we'll see we'll we'll see we were shite bet absolutely dog shite it was worse i would say today's performance was worse worse than the performance against the jacks i honestly believe that other than like so the thing with the the thing with the jacks game like i said earlier i don't think necessarily the swansea were that much better or they played like this amazing football they just wanted it they wanted it from the first second two corners in the first 30 seconds whereas like cardiff players just didn't give shit it was like the reverse of the first game and today the worrying thing is all right maybe you could say like the derby got to them blah 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 all this bullshit excuses what you can say is today cardiff the cardiff players had the same attitude passive just just don't care like and it's i will i just don't understand why we're playing players who we know are not going to be there next year it, it makes no sense to me all right if we were if we were like fighting relegation or still in with a chance of playoffs you could say yeah right let's you know play your strongest squad or whatever it may be you know like play bowler because he's dangerous or whatever but but like bowler will not be here next year he doesn't care at the best of times he's massively inconsistent so why play him why not play tanner i i agree with you race our away our away form generally speaking this season has been really encouraging and we've had some big results big performances earlier in the season as well where we were a bit unlucky, like the Leeds and Leicester game straight away springs to mind where we could have could have really done better. Um, I'm not quite there, mate, um, with Errol out. Um, I've stuck up for him all season, but I am frustrated by his lack of ability to learn as we're going along. But, um, you know, some people are and some people are not. Um, yeah, of course, Nat Phillips, you have to play him because there's, like, McGuinness is out. And I, I wouldn't include Phillips in there because I believe if they can work something out with Phillips, because Phillips is out of contract in the summer, if they can work something out and he wants to come to Cardiff, there is a slim chance he'll be at City. He's got to, got to get his wages down and all that sort of stuff. But if he wants to join the club, he will. Um, so I wouldn't include him in that. But like bowlers detrimental to the side. He was at fault for the first goal in the Swansea game. You never quite know what version of him is going to turn up going forward. He doesn't put the effort in going backwards. And half the time, he's fucking about with his hairband. So, I just don't understand playing him. I'd rather, and like people who watch, like, well, no, I'm not a massive fan of Mate on the right. But, like, I'd play him over Bowler. I'd play, I just, I would just like to see Ollie Tanner get a few games. And then I'd play Tanner off the right for the rest of the season starting. And then I'd start bringing in Ashford, Ashford for the last 15 minutes or so. But it's uh, it's shame because for Cardiff, we seem to be either very, very good 
or absolute dog shit. We never seem to just be all right and get through. We never seem to just play. I've been very disappointed. GD Parry says bowlers are 20 seconds of magic versus Watford. That's all he's done. I've been very disappointed with him, mate, because I think there's a player there. I've said a few times, <coughs> I think if he played off the left and was motivated, he could be one of the best wingers in the championship. He's direct, he's quick, he's skillful, he, he can beat a man. And I think if he played as a traditional winger, beat his man, put a ball in the box, etc., I think he could, could be a player. But I don't know whether it's a mentality thing or, or what. Very poor, though. Very, very disappointed with him. Um, Christ, I'd rather see Wilson Esbrand play on the right wing than play bowler. And I've been very disappointed with Wilson Esbrand in the last two games. Um, I don't know whether maybe his performance against the Jacks has got in his head a bit because he was very good up until that. And then he absolutely looked like the occasion got to him. And he is like a young player. Maybe it was like a, a new kind of thing to him. Big game. Um, and he just looked like the occasion got to him. And then he just looked awful today. The past, the general standard of both teams today, I thought was poor. The one player who I thought looked pretty good was Joe Bellingham. Uh, do I think the board will make signings this summer? I mean, yes and no. Like, I don't think we're going to spend millions, mate. But I would, I'd expect us to bring some players in. But I think what's more important is the players we get out. We've got got to get the right players in and the right players out and half the battle is getting the right players out Sunderland have taken one point from the last 21 and I said it in the preview Cardiff have got a habit of when teams come to play us and they're bang out of form we make them look like they're Brazil I said it in the preview and what have I just said tonight we've made them look like fucking peak 1970s Brazil unreal only Cardiff City um, Reese says, uh, frustration of today. I didn't even think that Sunderland were very good. We were just poor. Yeah, it was awful, mate. We, uh, I didn't think Sunderland were very good. I, I, like, I thought from the Sunderland side, I thought, um, I think it's Alex Neil. Neil was very good. And I thought Joe Bellingham was good. Apart from that, I thought they were pretty average. Barr was all right. Certainly nothing that we should have been like, you know, they didn't outplay us or anything like that. Um, GD Parry says, can we make signings without a team strategy? If Baloo goes, we've got to find someone else first. Well, this is the issue, isn't it? Is regardless of whether you're Baloo, Baloo, Bullet in or out, we should know by now. The club should know. He should know because we should be building for next season. So it's all very well me saying, don't play bowler because he's not going to be here next year. Play some of the youngsters. So, like, <coughs> I want to know if Joel Colwell and Keen Ashford are ready to play first team football. So if we played them for a, you know 20 minutes here and there for the rest of the season, even if they played like 15 between 20 and 10 minutes for the every game for the rest of the season, the two of them, you can have a good look at them for the next whatever games it's five games and else I mean like you can have a look at them and you can say right or well, Joel's ready, but Kian needs maybe go on loan for three months at the start of next season to play some first team football in League One or two. Same with same with Tanner. Like Tanner's gonna be here next year. So let's give him a run of games. Like you've seen what has happened with Colwell when he gets a run of games. Like I gotta say, the management of Colwell this year has been abysmal. I don't know what he's doing with him. He's always the one that comes off, despite looking like he's generally speaking always the one who looks most likely to do something every time he gets a run of games where he's playing well he rotates him bizarre bizarre and i do wonder whether the fact that he constantly comes off and constantly gets rotated if that's why he looks like he hasn't got 90 minutes in him sometimes because he never plays 90 minutes i don't know it's like a bit of a vicious circle, I suppose. Andrew says, Vincent Tan hasn't got a clue how to run a football club. Mate, I can't even begin on Vincent Tan because I said this was going to be 25 minutes and I've already done 35. Um, if I get started on him, 
will be here all night and it'll be even more negative and i don't like to be like ranty and negative and all the rest of it like i that's not me i like i try and i like to talk about football and i like to talk about tactics and and the way the game is played and enjoy these things but these last two games have been have been rough heavy and um adding wales in between that as well and it's been a fucking awful month for football we have not enjoyed watching football in the last month um and like you know if a new manager comes in he might he's I'd probably i would say a good chance that he's going to play a very very different style of football he's gonna want maybe different players maybe he doesn't fancy certain players maybe Syopis has come over here for bullet maybe gutas has come over here for bullet and they don't want to stay with a new manager and all these sorts of things uh reese says i do think the international break and then a friday monday game squad rotation was heavy today not to over no look i understand rotating the squad today i just thought he got the rotation wrong it had to be it can't be rules and winter it has to be a different combination for me even if you play if i right, say you're saying right say you say to me well you can't play rules and turnbull together because they're a bit too similar all right okay i accept that but you can't play winter and rules together okay so you could try Wintle and turnbull or you could play romeo as the more defensive midfielder with rules like there's a whole host of things you could do you could play three five two you could give Syopis an hour and then take him off just because Syopis has traveled i don't buy into the fact that because he's traveled to greece or whatever that he couldn't play today all right maybe he didn't have 90 minutes in him but maybe he got an hour in him poor mate and i guarantee you on monday reuben corwell will be the scapegoat and he'll be dropped but bowler will play Wintel will play sick and tired of it sick and tired of it right guys it's been a pleasure as always i know it's been a bit negative today but it's very diff difficult to be positive when you see that absolute shower of shit. um what i will say is tomorrow the flower hour the boys will be a day later the boys will have a bit of a laugh a bit of a quiz this saturday night a couple of beers join them They'll talk about the game, talk about Cardiff going forward, all the rest of it. Sunday will be five things we've learned from today, which is probably going to be negative, but I'll try and be as positive as I can and and, and whatnot. And then um, Monday, obviously, the Cardiff City phone in, and uh, then we'll be looking ahead. Obviously, you'll have the Monday. Is it Monday we play next? It is, isn't it? Coventry, big game. We'll have the Coventry preview as well. That'll be on Sunday night. Um, so I might, it'll be like back to back. You'll have the five things we learned and then it'll be the, the, the preview. Um, we'll have Kyle City phone and it'll be on Monday, um, which is going to be interesting. They'll talk about both games. Cardiff City, CCFC versus CCFC. We do do better away from home. That's the only hope. Well, here we go. Well, my, um, my my predicted lineup for for monday is going to be wild because um i would change it up massively against coventry straight away i think i'm i might change between but the time now and when i have a little look at coventry and, and stuff but off the top of my head now i'm going three five two against coventry and i'm changing it up completely oh dowder is left wing back um perry ng is the third center back uh Probably Romeo, maybe, as the right wing back. Turnbull and Syopis as the two in midfield, with Colwell just behind Grant and let's, let's say Mate, just for, for shits and giggles. I wouldn't rush uh, Ramsey to start. I don't think there's any point. Just give him time off the bench at the moment. Um, and then when he's fit, I would shift Colwell out to the right and play Ramsey in the 10. For now, um, that's what I would do against Coventry, just to, just to switch things up, try and get, like, what's the definition of insanity is doing the same shit over and over again. 
Um, very quickly, let's have a look at Coventry. Watford have beaten Leeds, interesting. Coventry beats Huddersfield, good result. Very good result, that is. Ellis Sims scored another two. Absolutely banging form, so he's going to be a big problem for us. Coventry are doing really well. They're in with a chance to playoffs. Um, let's have a look at this Coventry side. Yeah, mate. Yeah, I would go 3 5 2 against them, and I would try and shore up the middle areas and, and try and get down the sides of them. But I don't expect the manager to do that. As I say, definition of insanity doing the same thing over and again, over and over again. Anyway, guys, I've done double the time I was going to do. Got a bit ranty. I apologize. Have a great weekend. Have a great Easter. Um, make sure you join the Flower Hour Boys tomorrow night. The phone in on Monday and join me for a double whammy on Sunday. Five things we learned and the Coventry City preview. It's been a pleasure. Make sure you subscribe to Cardiff City World. City content seven days a week by the fans, for the fans. And if you want to get involved, get involved. 10th of May live event with uh, Ace Podcast Nation and Willie Boland City Legends event. The fourth one we've done in Pont If you haven't got your tickets, get your tickets. Details in the description below. Nice one. Thank you.